So we're just at Bawtry Golf Club on the range with Mark Foz and we're just watching him practice hitting a few shots and just talking a bit about his game at the minute and, and Mark, how's it been going? What have you been working on? How is it? I, what's going on? Yeah, well, you've caught me a time. Uh, just had a couple of weeks off to certain things at home so just trying to get back into it yeah. and you know, as you guys know, it's not the easiest period for me after a couple of back operations. Yeah. Two weeks of not hitting balls. It's quite a tough dangerous time so I have to watch what I'm doing when I come back Definitely. and as we've discussed before when I come back from a couple of weeks off a lot of people will probably resonate with this when you're playing golf and you've not warmed up or you've not played for a while you feel stiff we're no different I mean nice sunny day today but still yeah. you know the body's stiff and it's a frustrating time for me because you know you want to get back into it but you just have to do certain things just to get back because I always say to you, I want separation in my game. We'll go on to that later, but I just turn once I've had a couple of times off and I'm stiff, I just swing in a block. So there's no separation, no up and down, yeah. no parameters widening. So it's just, a, it actually looks okay to the naked eye, but it's just a, a, a one, one block, two block swing. Yeah where I say to the, these guys, to me it feels like I've got two follow-throughs. I, if I say that to you, then you know I'm not swinging yeah. it very well. I'd probably like to look at doing some exercises, yeah. really on just getting some separation to get me going a bit quicker. Definitely, yeah. I guess that's something uh, well said, what we can all relate to a little bit at home. You might have got out of the car, you're a bit tight, onto the first tee, not really loose or you've not played for it, you might only get to play once a week where you're not used to moving your body as Mark kind of referred to moving as a block which is everything kind of moving together and not creating that separation I think it's a classic scenario, you know I, I know you teach, I do the playing side of things but we chat about facilities we actually, we are at Bawtree, our home base it's in a transitional period where the driving range has been knocked down so all of a sudden we buzz into the car park obviously at 30 mile an hour as you should <laughs> uh, but you jump out of the car yep. there's no range there you're on the tee going like that and you know it, it, we always joke about smoke and mirrors but it takes <laughs> us three or four holes to get going yep. Well, if you're if you're in a competition, you can't afford those three or four holes. Separation is such a fundamental key because without the separation, it's really going to inhibit your sequencing as but well. Yeah, because yeah. without separation, you know you can't go vertical, you can't go in and out, you can't go that way. So exactly, uh, and that's for, for me that's the worst feeling ever when you've just got one block comes out thin, doesn't go as far, and yeah. you just or, uh, classic, you just don't feel warmed up. Takes yeah. you three holes to catch the middle of the club. Definitely, and. And in terms of what you're feeling in the swing then, so the viewers can kind of relate to what you're sensing, because we all hear the word block and things moving together, but how does that translate into how it looks for you? Best description I can give it, it's literally like a rectangle wooden block. And if that block was like that, it, it can not just all move together like that and like that. And obviously we chat about, you know, side bend, rotation, there's just none of that there. So sure. uh, it, it's, it's a simple term, but it is how it is. If you if you put your whole body in a rectangle, you just move like that, and then you move like yeah. that because your body's not wanting to do anything else. Definitely, yeah. All moving together, as the word block would suggest. See the band as your muscles. We need to create some stretch to create this potential energy. It's elastic energy that we can use to recoil. And this is ultimately what ah. we're looking at. <laughs> and it took his eye out. <laughs> so this is really how we want the muscles to be operating in the swing. We want to create some stretch so we can create the recoil. Yeah, that's the perfect description. Mm. So just to go back to the block thing, from my point of view, the band's there, if you see the band, the band just works like that. So when I'm stiff or we're stiff, body-wise, it just works like that. What we're after is some movement and exactly. some stretch. And that's what we're after, you know, this, like I said, replicating muscles, exactly. Exactly, movement being the, the operative word there. We need movement, we need these joints to be able to experience movement and separation of movement as well. That's ultimately how we're gonna transfer these forces through the body to the club in the most efficient way as well. So. We've touched on the feelings that you experience when you are moving like a block. Yeah, so how are you going to get me some separation That's there? what we're going to look at then. So simple exercises using the band to start with. We're just going to talk about creating that stretch in the downswing then. Very simply, you could use a door frame at home if you haven't got a ferro band. But like I said, these are readily available online at sports shops. A couple of, couple of quid, they're not expensive. Well worth investing in for sure. So what we're going to do, Mark, first, is we're going to focus on lead arm. So left arm for the right hand the golfer, opposite obviously for the lefty. And all we're gonna do is pop the band in that lead arm. And I'm gonna create a bit of tension on the band, not, not loads of tension, just enough so we can feel a bit of stretch. And what we're gonna get Mark to experience is how we can use the, 
the body weight, the dropping of the body weight into the ground to create a small degree of stretch on the band. So as more it drops into the ground, you can see the band starting to stretch, but not fully. Then from there, you can just start to do three or four reps, just feeling that drop. But what's initiating the drop is the body weight drop in. Yeah, just to give you an idea there, I, I'm not using my arm. It yeah. might look like, you know, I'm, I, I'm actually not using my arm at all. I'm bend, body weight drop. I'm bending from there. So, okay, the, the arm comes with it, but you, you're not yeah. using, to describe the block thing, the block thing, everything just goes like that. It goes together. He's goes got together. maximum stretch on the band. But that's this, that's this side, and then yep. there's no more stretch. So, yeah, that's good, Sam. Keeping that stretch on the band. And you'll see if he does it in the incorrect way, where he goes with the upper body first, you'll kind of see where the, where the arm gets thrown out. He gets a lot of stretch on the band early now. That's potential energy that is used too early in the so swing. So all the energy is already in the band. There. Yeah, it's yeah. gone. Where we want to maintain that, which what we'd kind of call lag, yeah. And then that's working through to where we go from there. So he's dropping into flexion to create some stretch. But what creates maximum stretch is the extension. And you can see where it starts to really ramp up the tension on the band. This is fantastic just to really develop some awareness around how we can move other parts of our body independently like Mark referred to there. He's not pulling the band. If he goes to, with the upper body too soon, you can see what this is gonna do. The arm is connected to the torso here. So as soon as this goes, this comes with it. And these are for the guys that have got over the tops or swing across the ball. You can really see how it starts to influence swing direction as opposed to leaving the band behind, using the lower body to initiate, letting the pressure shift across into the ground into the ground into flexion i've got all this energy ready to use later on at delivery so that's something very quickly you can do just to create this separation in the body from lower to upper not upper and then the lower not really being able to react and use the sequence with it and then from there you can transition into the club what i'd encourage to maybe do to keep, while the sensation's fresh in the mind is go keep with the lead arm so you can do the exercise with the lead arm you can swing it back there you go and you can imagine the band He's going to drop into it and that club's way behind here so we can really load in then from there we can really unload the power that's where we created maximum stretch on the band and when you've had a few reps five to ten is, is a good number you don't want to tire or fatigue this is where you can just hit a few shots and let the exercise really organically flow into your movement as a result And this is kind of the, the organic process here. You do a bit of an exercise, you feel the stretch, you're developing some awareness to how the body can move. And then it's time to really leave the exercise where it is and come in and just play your shots. Yeah, um, I get, I'm just relating to back to what we said earlier. Yeah. I mean, what have we, I mean, I've made 10 swings there. I mean, yeah. if you come in there, that's the first, that's the first uh, ball that's come, what we call second groove as a player. Yeah. The first 10 shots have come out the bottom groove we've only made 10 swings there and yep. it's come a groove further up so it's doing everything i want as a player there as you know you know my game mm -hmm. same as marcus but that's the difference you could have been doing that on the side of the putting green yeah and all, all of a sudden your first shots are better already exactly you're affecting change quick yes and that's what we want we don't have to want to be having to do thousands of reps of a drill or an exercise to, it doesn't need to be that way it's old school thinking isn't it where you've got to secrets in the dirt type type mentality yeah exactly yeah. and you know we, we've not got time everybody's mm. got their own stuff you know exactly. i've got their own time get in there got an ideal facilities make the most of it yeah. but we, we haven't all got that so it's just finding ways yeah as we say get the scores down and get playing better and get be, uh, playing better earlier in your rounds exactly and we're going to move on so a bit of progression to the exercise is utilizing the the rotational discs That's these give me. you instant feedback the the rotational discs because if they rotate early because you're driving it from the upper body you'll soon notice if mark performs it in the i guess the incorrect way for you where it don't quite feel right you can see how the discs have gone early with the upper body so really the lower body is reacting to the upper body here so the sequence is top driven that's where the lack of separation occurs yeah really when i'm all together it feels exactly like that and then the club's on the way down, so I've actually got to go like that yep. to, get the, to get the ball back. And you've got to manipulate and try and save it a little yeah. bit. And if we use the band again in this, you'll start to see if Mark takes in the lead arm and then just rotates back, so they just twist a bit towards me. Then from there, as he drops into it, you can see how the 
it's dropped into flexion but the discs rotate later and it's the unload off the discs that creates that stretch for him right at the bottom where we want it brilliant that's, so that's a very different movement yeah for me. we touched on something earlier mark really likes to do exercises that you can do on your own which is something that you was quite it is true yeah yeah something that you can take away and you don't you don't need a coach's eye there because the coach ain't always going to be there. You want to. You've got the instant feedback. You know you, you you're developing good form. Well, I, I mean, we discuss this a lot. You yeah. know, you guys coach. They come on the course with me. We yeah. play. We're going to do the tour player experience. And I say the same thing. You stand on that first tee. You're on your own. Mm, so you exactly. need to develop some self awareness, some self skill, even your own versions of this stuff. Definitely, yeah. Uh, to take it out onto the course. It's self regulation, you've, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to do your technique. Mm. But I always say the same thing. The course is a lot tougher exam than standing on a rectangle mat that's aiming yeah. for you and it's got a bit of bounce. That's, that's why we're trying to get warmed up earlier so we can get into that exam straight away and start playing, by exam I mean round of golf, yeah. we can start playing well from the start rather than the classic, oh, I'm three over after mm. three, I better start playing now. It's not so much the mentality, it's the fact that you've, you, you just warmed up after of three course. holes and you start playing better. Yeah, definitely. And there's a lot being said as well, performing the exercise with a, an internalised feel of what's happening what you notice is different like when Mark stepped off there he instantly said that that's very different that's the place I'm not used to visiting and that's good because that tells you that the body's moving in a different way than ordinarily recognizes as well yeah. that internal sense can be kind of coupled with an external cue as well in terms of a shot shape so if we perform the exercise again and I asked Mark to simulate what it would feel like to play a draw with the exercise do you notice difference between draw and fade space? So when you twist back into the, rotate those discs and drop into flexion, then use the extension for the draw. So you're starting to really, the whole body's adapting to that cue of, okay, what's the draw feel like? The draw arc, the draw swing. Drop in again and flex up. And then compare that to a fade feel for your mark, which might be a bit more familiar. Feel a bit different? Yeah. It just feels, I mean, there, all of a sudden, again, I break into playing mentality yeah. straight away, but I'm using the band for path, you yes. know, so the, the, the band's on a different, Brilliant. it's on a different path. Exactly. Obviously, the draw path's there, the fade path's more down. It doesn't, it's actually not moving that much, but that's the feeling I'm getting with yeah. the, on, on that bit there, you know, the band's got to come from there more. Brilliant. So it's starting to connect movement to outcome as well, which is... Which is the aim of the game, because ultimately, the game of golf, yeah, yeah, we want to be using the outcome to influence our movement as well. So when you are performing exercises, you might be working on with a coach, adding lessons or drills. Try to not just get internal and sense what the body's doing, but have that external cue as well. So when you do step off the apparatus, you can look up there and you're cueing it in an organic way from from the outcome and intention first as well. So when you performed a few reps in this, the best thing to do is get straight onto the ground, have that club in your hand so you can start to make a few swings just to really start to connect this whole pattern in the swing for the shot. So you can go lead arm or both hands but onto the ground and just really having a feel for what you start to recognize, what becomes draw a feel for you. So you're developing your feel your feels here. Fade, yeah, feels good. Come can't. on, move these somehow. I want to, <laughs> I want to clip some away. No, it feels good. Yeah, it's a great point you make. Just once you get back on the thing, just get, just, just replicate what you've just done in the, and just get, just get that feeling internally what what you're trying to do. Definitely, yeah. And then just step in there. Play a few shots just to let the exercises flow into your movement. Shot. See, and a, a draw. Normally, if I wasn't warmed up, I wouldn't try and play a draw straight yeah. away and I've hit one there. Yeah, lovely you know shape. what I'm like, I'd, I'd be like a thinny fade first three or four shots, get, you know, the third groove. Out the middle. What would we say, which you've got to, to be drawing it. Yeah, exactly. So that proves in those 10 minutes there, I've actually warmed up. We've only hit six shots or something. Yeah, it doesn't need, it's, it's the, the quality over quantity, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the key part to this, so you can, there's a nice little insight there into how you can use your exercises in a very productive way where you can affect change very quickly as well. Um, and you don't need to be a tour player to do this. If you've got a clear intention and clarity of what you're trying to achieve from the exercise, you're connecting it to an external outcome as well. It's going to marry up much quicker and it's going to be far more transferable when you get out on the golf course as well. So give that a shot. Thanks, Foz, for your time. Thank you. Looking Sam, awesome you've... there.
just sharpen me up in 10 there minutes. I'm happy with that, Sam. Well, thanks, um, mate. If you like the video, drop a comment, leave some feedback on any future videos you want me and Mark to do, and get out there, give this a try, and get on the course and play some better golf. Play well, guys.